wonder what I should do this summer. Hmm. I'm bored. What the heck else can I do? So we have the brand new Hellboy here in the Hellraiser line. This is brought to us by Air Venturi, guys. Uh, saw this at SHOT Show, heard some really great stuff about it. You got a lot of uh, interchangeable part opportunities and stuff, uh, all on this AR CO2 BB gun platform. Uh, comes in a box, looks just like this. You got the styrofoam backing that's kind of pre-cut for everything. Uh, talking about what you get in the box, of course, you are gonna get the gun with one magazine. So magazine looks like this, ready to go. And we'll show you how to load this with CO2 and BBs. It's a little bit complicated, but we'll get to that here in just a few minutes. Uh, so you got the gun magazine. You are also going to have your CO2 piercing uh, Allen key for the screw on the bottom of the mag. And then your manual even comes with a couple targets in the back of the uh, little baggie here as well. Uh, and of course, we brought along some goodies here. Got a couple extra mags. Uh, we're also going to get our first look at the Dust Devil BBs. Uh, these are also in this Hellraiser line that Air Venturi's brought out. Uh, these are made right here in the USA and they're frangible, which means that you're going to be able to shoot at metal targets or hard targets, basically anything harder than the BB, and it'll break on impact. So you don't have to worry about ricochets and stuff like that when you're shooting at hard targets. Of course, that doesn't apply to anything softer, um, like a wood or something like that. You know, you can't shoot them at trees and expect them to break. Uh, but all metal targets, so that's a lot of fun, especially for you three gun shooters out there. If you're looking to do some practice in the backyard or the basement, these are gonna be perfect. All right, guys, so let's take an up close look at the Hellboy here. We're gonna start at the muzzle. Uh, you have kind of a standard uh, faux flash hider. Obviously, we don't have a uh, flash with this as it's not a firearm, but you do kind of have that flash hider look there. Uh, and then you do have your smooth bore barrel, of course, BB gun, so it is a smooth bore. Uh, we do have our fixed post front sight. You can see the post in there, of course. Uh, and dropping down below that, you have your sling mounts, which is also equaled by one in the back, which you could change from to either side, whatever suits you best. Uh, there are only a couple pieces of plastic on this gun, which is really cool. Um, the handguard is plastic, the grip is plastic, and the buttstock is plastic, but it is on an aluminum buffer tube. Um, so you got a lot of metal on this gun, so it's got a pretty good weight to it. Um, and of course, you know, you can actually replace out the handguard here. It's, it, anything that's compatible with the GI collar system, uh, you just pull that guy back two halves and it comes apart. Uh, so it's a carbine length handguard here, so you could replace that with like something with a quad rail uh, or really whatever you like there. And of course, guys, dropping down to the magazine, you do have your magazine release on the right-hand side of the gun. Simply press that in, you're able to pull the magazine out. It doesn't drop free, uh, but you are able to pull that out pretty easily. Uh, we'll show you how this exactly works in a minute. Get through the rest of the gun here really quick. Um, you do have your dust cover slash ejection port here um, and a operable charging handle. Now this doesn't actually cock the gun, but it will open the ejection port. So pretty easy, you just pull it back, you can let it go. Uh, really easy to operate. Again, doesn't actually cock anything. Um, so to do this is basically just for effect. Um, but it's like, I like it, it adds to the realism, which is really nice as well. Um, and then of course we do have on the other side our selector switch, so you have safe and semi-automatic. Now it does say auto here and it does flip into that position. Sadly, this gun does not have the fun switch, guys. So shooting it on auto will actually just yield semi-automatic results. So one shot, one BB expelled per trigger pull. Um, so you can leave it there, you can flip it all the way if you want, doesn't really matter, but of course on safe, renders everything inoperable, blocks the trigger. Uh, you do have a bolt catch or release, uh, doesn't actually operate as there is nothing cycling inside of the gun. Um, and then up top, of course, so we have our rear sight, which is fully adjustable for windage and elevation. And you not only get the big iris here, but you also have the flip up to the smaller, more precise iris as well. Um, so they got a lot of features packed in. And of course, you got your two screws here. This guy comes off revealing a flat top Picatinny rail. So you can go ahead and mount something like this UTG red dot or the red dot of your choosing. 
uh, right onto here, no problem. If you did want to have something that's going to co-witness for you, you would have to add a properly uh, height or proper height rear sight into that with this red dot setup or whatever red dot you're going to end up using. So keep that in mind. We are going to mount the red dot for our accuracy testing. Uh, just figured it'd be a nice little add-on, show you guys how it mounts up and everything, uh, what it looks like without it. Uh, but dropping down to the grip specifically, um, the grip is one of the things that is not going to be replaceable on this gun. Now, if you're into airsoft, um, this will actually be uh, comparable to any airsoft style grip you might have. So a lot of them will probably work. But if you want to swap this out for a tried and true AR grip, this is not going to work. It's actually a little too wide on the base for a standard AR-15 style grip, uh, M4 style grip to work. And moving back to the buttstock, guys, this is fully adjustable. So your standard six position adjustment style. Uh, the buttstock itself as i mentioned before is plastic but you do have an aluminum buffer tube here um, all replaceable of course with your standard ar style components if you want to put uh, magpul buttstock or whatever the heck you like uh, you could certainly throw that on here without a problem and it adjusts just like any other well most other ar style adjustable stocks where you simply press up on that lever and you have that those six adjustment slots i like to run it about here that's just what works for me of course your length of pull to where you want to set it's going to depend for you uh, goes from about a 30 inch overall length to about a 33 and a half inch overall length I believe so uh, you do have a good bit of adjustment and again you know pretty lightweight package with all of this being metal so guys it's a pretty realistic replica of your AR M4 style rifle um, one other really cool thing which obviously enhances the realism is that you can actually take this down upper and lower receivers apart um, just only using the front pin so to do that we're just going to go ahead take a punch or an allen key a uh, punch would certainly be better and you just simply push at the back there and you even have the detent like you have on a real AR, but like I said, you only need the front one to come apart, and then obviously you have your two halves. So if you do have a jam in your barrel or something, uh, you could put a rod down there and clear yourself out without a problem. And as you can see, most of the stuff in here is functional, but it doesn't actually serve a purpose, all right? Uh, basically, the guts in the gun are in the magazine. So for how this gun operates, uh, the magazine is really uh, what is key to the function of the gun, not just from a CO2 perspective, but it also houses your sear, and we'll show you that in a minute here, guys. So guys, all you need to do to get this back together, you just go ahead, insert the halves back into each other, and then you just press through, and you are good to go. So really simple, um, and again, really convenient way to clear a jam or something like that, not a problem. Let's show you guys how to load the CO2 into the magazine. It's a little bit of a complicated process, and then we'll get to our normal battery of testing, including chronograph, all that stuff, uh, accuracy as well, and we'll have some fun with it afterwards. We're gonna compare the dust devils to obviously a standard steel BB, both in the accuracy realm as well as velocity because they're a little bit lighter, so we should get more speed out of them. Uh, but uh, let's show you that magazine, get some CO2 loaded up, and then we'll get to shooting. All right, guys, so we're going to show you how to load up CO2 and BBs into your Hellboy magazines. It's an 18 round BB mag, a little bit of a tricky process to get everything loaded up into here um, and removed or whatever you happen to be doing with it. But uh, let's get it going here. I do always recommend guys putting on some safety glasses. Uh, and in the case of loading or removing CO2, some gloves can typically help as well. Although it's pretty warm out today, so I'm not too concerned about that. Uh, first thing you're gonna wanna do here is go ahead, depress this little button on the side of the magazine and then pull up. So you have your inner magazine and your outer magazine. Um, the manual come very descriptive in terms of this entire process as pictures and all that. It's like three pages in terms of loading, unloading, BBs, all of it. So, um, so you have your housing here, just like your standard AR box mag, basically. And really, we have the, the heart and soul of the Hellboy here in the magazine. So you have your, uh, your, your sear as well as your hammer here, basically. So your trigger rides here, uh, tips that, which then impacts the valve stem, which opens the valve, lets CO2 out, and then spits your BB out right here. So uh, first thing we're going to do is show you guys how to load up some CO2. Really easy to do. Uh, obviously, you can see one side of the magazine is open. The other side has some stuff here to keep you from putting it in that way and stopping the co2 uh, we're going to take our co2 we're using crossman co2 here today guys doesn't really matter what kind of 12 gram co2 you use as long as it is 12 gram co2 uh, you just insert it like that you just want to make sure the head goes into the kind of valve face there uh, and then we can kind of get this secure by hand and then we're going to take our included allen key and we go ahead and start twisting now uh, one thing i want to note guys 
always when I, it doesn't matter what gun you're using i always recommend loading a magazine with co2 when there are no bbs in the mag okay um, if there was to be like a valve leak or something like that you don't want bbs shooting out at you um, and, and it certainly can happen i've seen it on a bunch of magazines you know that that end up having leaks or something like that so something to keep in mind always do this empty uh, but we're going to go ahead turn and you want to keep your hands free of this area here probably get a little action when it pierces so you hear it leaking you go past that just a little bit, tighten it around, and you are good to go. So no leaks, nothing like that going on here, and we're good to go, all hot, and uh, we just need to go ahead and load our BBs. So to load our BBs, this is actually uh, one of the nicer mags. I can't stand the magazines that you have to hold this follower down. I absolutely hate it, guys. Um, typically, I use like an Allen key or something. It is a pain in the butt. All right, thankfully on the Hellboy here, we have a little retention spot here. So you just pull the follower down, flip it over into that slot there, and you're good to go. You just load them one at a time right through there. Uh, don't have a speed loader on hand or anything like that, but again, pretty easy to do. Uh, you're just going to take your BBs. We got some Air Venturi steel BBs here, and you just drop them in one at a time. And then I like to flip it up like that, which drops it down. Uh, and I'll show you guys there. So you drop it in, tip it up like that, and you're good to go. Uh, really easy to do. And again, it's an 18 round BB mag. You get them loaded up and you are good to go. All right, guys. So once we have all 18 rounds loaded up in the magazine, we're going to release the follower here. Just slide it up like that and you are good to go. Uh, and then we are going to reinsert the inner magazine into our outer housing here. So to do that, we're going to depress this tab right here. Insert so that tab makes it past the wall there and just press down, you're good to go. This is ready to rock. You load this into the gun, you take it off safe, and you are ready to shoot. We're gonna go do some chronograph testing. We'll get the sound testing. Uh, we'll do shots per, uh, per CO2 cartridge as well as some accuracy testing. Uh, we'll be back with you here in a second. All right, guys, so we're gonna do our chronograph testing. We're gonna start with steel BBs, got a fresh magazine with a fresh CO2, uh, and then have another magazine with a fresh CO2 in it, loaded up with the Air Venturi Dust Devil BBs. Um, the gun's rated at 495 feet per second with steel BBs. Uh, we're obviously gonna put that to the test over the chronograph here. It's about 80 degrees outside, so something to keep in mind. Obviously, your CO2 performance is gonna be impacted by temperature. Uh, but anyway, to load up your magazine once you have it loaded up and fully assembled, insert just like that and you are good to go again you can rack the charging handle doesn't actually do anything um, but you are good to go we're going to take her off safe and put a few over the crony All right, guys, so we got about 500 feet per second on the high end, so between 470 and 500, which is pretty good uh, for a gun rated 495 with the steel BB. Now we're going to try the Dust Devils. Now these are lighter, so these are 4.35 grains, uh, whereas a standard steel BB is 5.1, so we are expecting a bit faster velocity out of this. Let's get it loaded up and see what they do. All right, guys, so interesting. Uh, actually about the same speed, but a lot more consistent results out of the Dust Devil BB. So uh, right in that 480 range, we had one spike up to about 490, uh, whereas we got one at 500. So uh, you're obviously gonna get some variance with CO2, uh, but definitely interesting, not that much of an increase. All right, guys, up first, accuracy testing at 10 yards. We have steel BBs. Went ahead and mounted this UTG red green dot here, uh, just to help a little bit with the accuracy. Um, and obviously just to kind of show it off that you can do it. Um, pretty neat little setup here. Let's see what this thing can do at 10 yards. All right guys, now we're gonna throw some dust devils down range. See how they do on paper. All right, guys, so looking at our accuracy results at 10 yards offhand with the gun, uh, so no bench setup. You're looking at basically it looks like a three, four inch group there. 
Um, not too bad from the offhand position, get a little wind in here, you know, it throws a BB off really easily. Uh, comparing that to our steel BB, so this is your steels, this is your dust devils, um, trailed down quite a bit. I don't know if that was me or the gun, um, but still, I mean, you have the bulk of your shots kind of centered there in a couple inches, but this is about a five, six inch group here if you consider that trail down. So uh, between the two, obviously, looks like the Dust Devils are doing a little bit better in the accuracy department. We're gonna get a fresh CO2 loaded up in one of the magazines and see how many shots per fill we get before we start seeing some clear downward tracking. Let's check it out. All right, guys, when we do the sound testing here with the Hellboy, we're gonna do five shots with BBs, and then I'm gonna take a couple without, not just to see the sound difference between, you know, with a BB and without a BB, but also because there's no way to know when the gun is empty outside of the noise. You know, you don't have a blowback mechanism that locks your bolt open or anything like that. Uh, so you really gotta key in on what it sounds like when it's empty, so you're not just wasting shots, uh, dry firing basically with just blowing out CO2. All right guys, so one other thing about the trigger, you know, 6.6 .6 pounds isn't too bad, not that far off from the real thing. Uh, it's a little bit different feel though, uh, than your standard like, you know, mil spec trigger kit that you're gonna have in your AR. Um, it's, it's a longer pull and obviously the angle of the trigger blade is a little different because of the way this, the trigger engages the sear mechanism that's on the magazine. Now we have an empty mag here. I just wanna show you guys the pull, the take up and that reset here, okay? So you gotta, little bit of take up there and then you're starting to pull against that sear come to a wall about there and then you break all right so pretty clean break actually right again right around six and a half pounds and then that reset you come out so you have to go all the way back on it you do feel it in the finger you can't really it's got a little bit of a noise uh, but a pretty tactile feel to it and then you take it up again come to that wall so it's got a really clean wall to it and again six and a half pounds or so not too bad at all All right, guys, that about wraps it up for the Hellraiser Hellboy uh, from Air Venturi. Guys, this is a, uh, a lot of fun. Um, not the most accurate thing out there, but then again, it's a BB gun. I don't expect it to be super accurate. Uh, you know, at 10 yards, this thing's gonna be able to pop water balloons, hit these gong targets, no problem. Uh, an AR platform replica that is pretty true to the real thing. You know, you got a couple plastic parts, but they are mostly interchangeable. Uh, the ability to mount an optic of your choice if you want. Uh, my gripes personally, I would love to see this gun actually have operable full auto. Um, you know, to have that auto marking there and then it not to go full auto is a bit of a tease, but that's all right. Um, as far as the magazines go, a little tricky to load them once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad, uh, but I would definitely recommend picking up some extra mags for it. Uh, you know, you gotta have more than one so you don't get stuck in between shots. You know, 18 rounds, would love to see a 30 round mag. Uh, who knows, maybe they're working on that for the future or something, but uh, not a bad representation of an AR platform. Uh, gonna be great for those learning uh, to shoot maybe the real steel version or kids. A really nice option, no recoil, uh, and not very loud either, and good velocity, almost 500 feet per second. You throw some dust devils in this thing and you're gonna have fun plinking steels in the backyard all day long. This is gonna be a great one for those of you looking to have some summer fun in the backyard. Uh, for the Insider Guys, I'm Tyler Patner. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. We'll see you guys at the next one.